Hi, sweetie. So today we are making French onion soup, but it's not real French onion soup. Like I add extra things and I do it differently because it's the way I like it. Fancy French onion soup has a lot of um, beef bone broth that has been made as the stock. I don't do that. I use some steaks. I'll show you that in a little bit because that was pre-prep work. We had a couple of things that were pre-prep work today. Um, putting it all together is real easy. And so we're gonna go through French onion soup. This was actually one that your mom really likes. Um, it was another one that we ate a lot when it was just mom and I uh, at home after everybody else had moved out. So she's probably gonna be mad that I'm making this not at her house. Anyway, so I'm gonna turn it down so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, so over in this pan, I have all of the onions that have already been cooked down and caramelized, because that takes probably a little over an hour on really low heat. You want to do it low and slow for this, otherwise you burn them, and that you don't get this nice color. And that's what you want for this soup. You've got some nice color. So what I'm going to do though is show you this really cool way that I learned to quickly peel an onion. I learned it from a TV show that I watched when I was young. I used to watch a lot of cooking shows. They were my favorite thing. And this one was the Frugal Gourmet. And he showed me how you cut an, order, cut an onion into quarters like this. And then you take the tip, that's the butt end, you take the tip end, just kind of slice it down almost to that last layer, and then pull it off. Boom, peeled onion. Now for this, I'll show you what I did with all of these onions. These were four kind of medium to large onions that I sliced and then threw all of these, these uh, peels and such, just into a pot, all of them into a pot with a little bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of parsley and then covered with water. And you let that kind of simmer. That's been on there for probably about an hour. And then, I mean, then you just, we just slice them. So they're already done. I'm not really gonna use these onions. Just give them a nice kind of slice like that. But we're gonna put those to the side because I'm not gonna use those. I'll just save them for something else later. I use a lot of onions, so it's okay. So two are nice caramelized onions here that we did with uh, probably few a few tablespoons of butter and a little bit of olive oil, just kind of drizzled on, salt and pepper. Mix them up, give them a good stir, let them start to sweat, and then turn the heat really low, give them a cover, and then check on them every 10 minutes or so. And you'll watch them start to just get all nice and, oh, that's, this is just beautiful. This stuff is just yummy, yummy. So to this, we're gonna add garlic. We have three large cloves of minced garlic. We're gonna add that in there. Well, yeah, in the background here, we have grandpa again. You can probably hear him. Uh, he, what is it, bossa nova? Yeah. We're doing bossa nova lounge music tonight. It's quite nice having uh, music to cook by. So we just put in our, uh, our garlic in here. We'll give that a little stir, let time to sweat out just a little bit. And then we're gonna add some red wine. Doesn't matter really what kind. I, whatever you have and you know it's grandma so there's wine so we're gonna put a little bit of red wine just a splash I mean that's probably probably like two tablespoons is what actually just went in there the rest is going in my glass and you give that a good stir you want all that nice yummy stuff from the bottom of the pan to be released so we add that in and at the same time we're going to add some Worcestershire sauce because that, that stuff's just awesome. It is a beautiful flavor. A couple of shakes, about a tablespoon. That's probably about a tablespoon. In total, let that kind of stir around a little bit. And then to this, we're going to add our lovely onion we made an onion stock. Now obviously we're not gonna put all those skins in there, right? So I have a colander. We're gonna pour that through the colander and strain it out. Turn that off. And then 
like all that leftover. Real, literally, just the onion ends and skins. Makes great stuff. Adds a lot of flavor and color to a, maybe a boring broth you have at some point. So that's not quite enough. That was about three cups. And then I also made, uh oh, I didn't have my thing. I need my thing. I got it. This is my thing. My thing is a pot holder. <laughs> I'll show you how I made just kind of a really simple beef stock. I took, I don't know if you can see that here. We're gonna move this out of the way. We're done with that. So we have, I took my, uh, some just some little fast fry steaks and seared them real quick on some high heat with a little bit of butter and garlic in the pan, both sides. You're not really trying to cook them. You just want a little bit of browning on the bottom of the pan. And then you take them out of the pan and you slice them all up. But then again, you add a little bit of red wine and you deglaze that pan. All those juices come up. You put the little cut up chunks, just nice little pieces of beef. And then you cover it with water and you do the same thing. You let that simmer for a couple, couple of hours actually, just to make sure that this meat is nice and soft. Like it's squishable. Mm, that's tasty. Cause you want it nice and soft and chewy. Now this is why it's different than French. This is my French onion soup because I like to add a little bit of meat in it just cause it makes it more of a dinner soup. But not everybody does that. Now the real broth that comes out of this is what makes your soup broth have that nice kind of thick flavor. You can, you can, I think you can see it here in the pan. It just has that really nice texture to it. As opposed to what else I'm gonna add. Now this is just a little bit of, again, a liquid beef bouillon that I, um, it was a concentrate and I reconcentrated it. This is three cups. So it never gets that, that nice thick broth texture. It just kind of stays that liquid. It's tasty, but it's not the same. So if you're using all of that, you can use all of that. It's still gonna taste good, but it's better if you can make your own, just a little bit of beef stuff. So to our pan, we had about three cups of the onion stock. We got about three cups of our reconstituted beef bouillon broth. And this is probably about two cups of our homemade broth and all the little meat chunks. We're gonna put that all in there. Now, turn that up. We're gonna bring that up to a boil. And we're gonna let that, because everything is already cooked, it doesn't really take that much time, but probably up about, you know, 15 or 20 minutes just to let it sit all together nice. Then you'd be done. I don't have any of the fancy little bowls here in our winter cabin that are oven safe. So normally what you would do is take this stuff out and you put it in your bowl and you put, now get this, I hate this. This is why it's not French onion soup in my world. Because you're supposed to put a piece of nice toasted baguette or French bread or some kind of a crusty bread on top and then top it with cheese and then pop it in your oven. I'm gonna turn this up because I'm doing it again. Here, let's that. Let's see. So you would put the bread on top and then put your cheese on top and then pop that into the oven. Give it a broil for like a minute, watch it just get all bubbly and crispy and it looks gorgeous. But you know what you're left with? Soggy, soggy bread. I can't stand the texture of that. So I have always asked for it on the side and I get looks like, oh, you must be crazy because you want the bread on the side. But I'd rather have a chunk of bread that you dunk into the soup than that soggy mess. So I just grate the cheese on top and eat it because I'm a little lazy most of the time. What you can do if you're not using the bread is take out a ladle full of just the onions and put it in a bowl, your, your oven safe bowl. Put your cheese on top of that, pop that under the broiler. Then when you take it out, pour your broth on top, then you still get the gooey, bubbly cheese that's really good, but without the sogginess. So depends how you wanna do it. Like I said, I don't have an oven safe bowl here. So that's pretty much it. 20 minutes sitting on simmer, cheese it up, French onion soup. That's how grandma makes it anyway. I love you. Bye. Okay, so it turns out that after I explained it, I really wanted it. So I found a way to make some bubbly cheese and I just put it in a little pan and I'm gonna to try to transfer it. But look at that, like look at how yummy that is. I, I have to admit that yes, bubbly, yummy, crispy cheese does make it so much better. So we're gonna try 
to put this because I'm doing it one handed again here. Eh? I took my little stuff apart. All right, look at that. And then you just lift that up and you put that in the bowl. I'll scoop all that other stuff out. Well, I can do it now. Scoop all that stuff out. Put that in the bowl. Ah, uh, there we go. And then we take our broth and a little more. And we could just ladle it on top. Oh, show the bowl. <laughs> there. So there's my version of French onion soup with no baguette and soggy bread because that's gross. Okay, now I'll say that's how Grandma makes it. Bye!